Hallelujah. Right where you stand, right where you are. I just want you to pause and embrace the moment. The moment that we're in oftentimes. We're in a move of God. Last week we said that we were in a move of God. It was standing in the midst. I don't know about you, but the presence of God is here. I, I can feel his presence. Hallelujah. Just say something to God. Worship the Lord. Whatever you feel, but just lose yourself right now for the next 30 seconds. Open up your mouth. Begin to say something to him. Glory to God. Come on. Say something to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell him of his goodness. Tell him of his grace. Hallelujah. Tell him how you appreciate him. God, we love you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We give you praise in this place. God, we thank you for this space and time. We thank you for constant visitation in this house, God. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs, God. We thank you for gathering us once again to enjoy your presence together, God. We thank you for every man, woman, and child that's connected to us, that's under the sound of our voice, God, that's viewing through our live stream. God, we ask you to meet every need in this place today. Let us not leave the same way we came. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. That's what I need you to say. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. I need you. I need you. I need you. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. I need you now. Heal, deliver, set free. Destroy every yoke. Remove every burden now. Men broken hearts. In the name of Jesus. God, you've done it before. You can do it now. Restore us to the place, God, where you are first. Anything that's taking your place, we ask you to remove it now in the name of Jesus. Wherever we lost you, God, huh? wherever we lost our reverence, give us a hunger and a thirst for you once again like never before God and we promise you God we will continue to praise you yes, Lord. we will continue to give you honor yes, Lord. we will continue to give you glory yes, because it belongs to you thank you God that we hear one more time to worship you to honor you and to praise you God we won't let our worship and our praise be in vain today we thank you now. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, clap your hands for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles, amen, and I'm not going to be long. Amen. Philippians. We're going to Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians, the second chapter, verse number 12. Philippians, second chapter, verse number 12. I want you to find that in your Bible. When you get there, amen, I want you to acknowledge by standing. Philippians 2 and 12. Philippians 2 and 12. Hallelujah. Last week, we started a series talking about, amen, discerning the seasons of God, said that we were in a season of expansion. And God said there's some prerequisites to qualify for what he's doing, what he's releasing in the earth. And this is for the believers. Hear what I'm saying. Just because you go to church every week, that don't mean that you believe. Some people just go because they've been trained and taught to go to church. But believers are going to connect with God no matter where they are. Right. Now they're going to have a desire and a hunger to gather, to, for, to, to come to the place of the house of worship. Amen. But when they're absent, they're still, they're, they're still believers. They don't change who they are because they're not in church. Right. So Philippians, the second chapter, and the word of the Lord reads, it says, amen. Wherefore, my beloved, verse number 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. And if you got a paper Bible still, you still a paper Bible saved, 
you might want to underline that, highlight it, and if you know, if you got a, your electronic Bible, you can do a little right-click thing, just like you got a mouse and highlight that. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Then it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I want to read that part again. It says, work out your own salvation. Look at somebody and tell them, you're responsible for your salvation. It says, with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Then it says, do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. We're talking about sonship, not just men, boys, sons, sonship. Sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. How many of y'all know we're living in a crooked and perverse time? It says, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Amen. I want to talk about to you about the prerequisites for expansion. Hallelujah. How do I qualify to receive in layman terms? How do I qualify for all that God has for me? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to say that our worship was our prayer this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, when we start talking about expansion on last week, we talking about God getting things to us. And, and, and sometimes we get to shouting and jumping. Amen. Before we have an understanding of what we're shouting about. And God showed me, say that to everything there is a season. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. We started with that scripture on last week. And, and it means that there is an appointed time for everything that God wants to do in the earth. There is an appointed time. I believe as we look at what's going on in the world and we look at the book of Revelation, we can see Revelation being played out right before our eyes. And if we're going to be in the place God needs us to be, it is vitally important. That believers get back to God. Look at somebody say we need to get back to God. Back to God. Notice I didn't say get back to the church. I want you in church, but I, re- I prefer you work on your relationship with God. Amen. So that when you come to church, amen, you are an asset and not a liability. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. I don't come to just church it and fellowship, but I come. Amen. Because, amen, I'm chosen of God to be here. Amen. The scripture tells us, amen. Uh, to work out our own salvation, to work out our own salvation. In other words, if I am saved, it does not say work for. Are y'all listening to me? It does not say work for. There is a difference. Look at someone and say there's a difference between work and for it. Y'all not, y'all not with me. You can't work for it. Because the Bible tells us in Ephesians, I believe, it says, by grace are ye saved. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 8, for it was by grace are ye saved through faith. Not of works. So I can't work for this. It is something that God gives me. Amen. When I come into a right relationship with him. That's another point. Right relationship. Amen. So one of the prerequisites, amen, for receiving what God has for you. And this is what, this is what I want you to think in your mind when we think about receiving of God. What does God want? Need to get? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Amen. Uh, the scripture says he would not withhold no good thing from them that does what? Walk upright. Amen. Uprightly before him according to his standards, not our standards. Get that in your spirit. Because when we talk about walking upright, we like to put standards on people. And because we put so many standards on people, that's why the church is in the condition that it is in now. Because we want them saved based upon how we see salvation. Amen. Some people might come, they might still have some issues. Yeah, I'm still talking to some of us. Because some of us sitting here right now saved with sinners, with sinners' problems. Saved with sinners' problems. But at least you saved. Redeemed from damnation. Destruction. Rescued from harm. Come on. But you still got issues. And so this is why we come back to Philippians when the scripture tells us to work out our own salvation. Too many of us have been working for our salvation. 
To work for it means I feel like I got to do certain things to be saved. The scripture says it is by, Ephesians says it is by grace are you saved. The unmerited favor of God, the, the grace of God is called, the, and I want to read that real quick in the Amplified, Ephesians 2 and verse 8. And I'm gonna, I am i got to work this thing because it's going to be a continuation. It says, for it is by grace. It says God's remarkable compassion and favor draw you to Christ that you are saved. Amen. Not because you can sing that good. And, and how many of y'all say that you heard somebody say, when I found the Lord. And they got saved, when I found the Lord. The Lord was never lost. So you, we pick up so we hear. Amen. <laughs> I, when I found the Lord. The Lord was never lost. You were the one lost. And so there was a word spoken one day, amen, that touched your heart. And that word found you yeah. and it drew you to God. The word of God is the grace of God spoken to us. And it says by this grace, amen, draws us to him that you are saved. It says, and then it says actually delivered from judgment and given to the eternal life. So in the scripture, being saved means delivered from judgment. Everybody say delivered from judgment. Delivered from judgment. So why do we still judge each other? Matthew said, judge not that you be not judged. Now, this also say we don't examine. But when we start putting standards on people, the Bible said, with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured unto you. And so the same standard that I hold against you, amen, is going to be held against me. Watch this, amen. You might have a drinking problem, but I might have a cussing problem, but I still got a problem. Oh, that's too deep. That's too hard. We don't drink and cuss. All right, then. Well, we, 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 we're critical. We're critical of everybody's life. We tell people how to dress. Yeah. Amen. And we dress for church, but we don't dress outside the church. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. So we're judging. And so the, the scripture says by grace. So God has given us a grace or space or something, amen, where he gives us space to come unhindered to work it out. Somebody say, bring your issues to God. Bring all the stuff that you're dealing with. Yeah. Your crazy habits, yes. your attitude, because yes, y'all know we got some attitudes. Yes. We could be speaking in tongue one minute and be running to church and somebody getting you away while you're running. You get mad because they were blocking me while I was praising God. No, you weren't in the spirit. You was in emotion. And so we got all this stuff going on and, 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 and it, dis, it, it disqualifies us. From the salvation or the expansion of what God is releasing in the earth, our attitudes, our judgmental spirits disqualifies us. So the thing, it comes back to us in Philippians. The scripture says, work out your own. I'm working these two together. Work out your own. You are responsible for your nourishment. You are responsible for identifying and dealing with your struggle. The word comes, amen, the word carrier comes to assist you, but you are responsible for working it yourself. Y'all still with me? Can somebody write in their notes that I am without excuse? Nobody never told me this. You got a Bible, right? We believe Google before we believe God. Google is some of y'all got. Baby, get out of my head now. Google will. We can see the scripture and we'll go and Google what we read and try to see what it means when it can be plain English. Work out your own salvation. What do that mean? So we're going to Google what does that mean? What does it say? Work it out yourself. Put myself in the places I need to be. So I can be properly nourished so that the issues I have are no longer an issue. Are y'all still with me? Put myself in the right environment so that my spirit is nourished properly so that the issues I have are no longer an issue. Somebody's in it getting on your nerve. Put that person before God. Because we got to figure out why we let stuff bother us so much. When people get on your nerve, this is what I find out in therapy. So some of y'all don't believe in therapy. I believe in therapy and Jesus. I found out in therapy when people make me, when I get angry easy about something, 
it's because something threatens my peace. When someone irritates you, you get irritated because they threaten, y'all like that word, threaten your peace. It's too easy. <laughs> so because when I show up, it, it makes you angry. Why? Why does my presence threaten your peace? What does scripture say? I'm going back to work out your own. Somebody say it's on me. I'm having fun with this. And so if, if things bother you so easily, it's not necessarily dealing with the other person. It's something within you. So when we're, when we're not what we need to be in God, we easily tripped or we stay stuck. We make excuses why we can't do what we've been called to do or who we say that we are. Somebody gets 2 Corinthians, I think it's 5 and 17, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. And I'm, I'm going to go back to you. I'm going to finish this. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Y'all still with me? This is good. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'm preaching to myself. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And I believe that the word of the Lord says, therefore, if the preacher. Uh-oh. Y'all Bible there say that? If any man be in Christ, in church. Because some people in church not in Christ. This is too simple this morning, isn't it? Well, if any man be, those two got to go together. In Christ. He is a what? A new creature. All things are what? And behold, all things are become new. Let me flip to the Amplified. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn, renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings spiritual awakening. So if I'm still struggling, I need a spiritual awakening. Well, I'm teaching real good. I've shouted, I've jumped, I've given my tithe, I've done all the church thing, but I have not had a spiritual awakening. So I don't qualify for what God is releasing. I got a title, I got a position, but have I had a spiritual awakening? If you have the same struggle you had last year, you're still dead to the things of God. Come on. I know I got saved, Pastor, but something happened. You went back. Still got the same habits? I shouldn't be doing the same thing I was doing before I got saved. Let me help some of y'all. Now, some of us, we're going to have some reoccurring issues. They're coming back. Just like the spirit that's been cast out of a man. When the spirit is going from a man, the Bible says, what, he goes out. Looking for somewhere when he can't find no place. He says, come back. When you go to the scripture, it says, come back to his house. He comes back owning with an ownership mentality. Then it says it brings back seven other spirits more deadly than itself. So it can be hidden. I'm just putting, I'm just reading the Bible. So when I don't have a spiritual awakening, when I just take the right hand of fellowship in church, when I come up to the preacher and I, and I come and I join the church, but I don't get in Christ, amen, I'm subject, amen, to steadily fall and have the same issues over and over again. So when God starts releasing things for the believers, I get skipped because I'm not where I need to be. Remember those words last week. Cycle, process. A cycle is something that goes over and over again. I keep repeating. I keep going by this time. You know, around April, everybody get excited. Everybody shouting because it's income tax season. The Lord is blessing. 
No, that's income tax. But I told you, if we discern the seasons of God, even in our winter seasons, when stuff don't supposed to grow, even in my winter season, amen, I'm still producing. I don't have dry seasons. As long as the earth remaining, seed time, harvest. It didn't say cold, heat, night. It said, it said something else in there. But even in those times, those two, those first two, there's seed time and harvest. So when I'm struggling, I can't blame other people. I got to go back and work. Somebody said I got to put in work. Some of y'all, I'm, I'm getting this, I'm getting some top of the heads anointing this morning. Everybody say put in work. Work out your own salvation. The preacher didn't give me what I needed. Work out your own. <laughs> I'm responsible. Can y'all say that with me? I'm responsible for finding what I need to help me grow. I'm responsible. Go like that. Touch, touch, touch. I am responsible for me. I'm going to go to church, amen, and I might not get, I not get, might not get into worship. I might not get into confession. But somewhere during the word, I, may, I need to find a word. I don't just need the word of God. I need a word from God. Somewhere in that word from God, I'm going to get a word of God. The word that I need to get me where I need to be to strengthen me. So the scripture says, work out your own salvation. Then, then, <laughs> and God said, God said the reason people are struggling because they don't want to work. Come on. The scripture talks about the ant and talk about the sluggard. Some of us are that, got that sluggard spirit. We, we just want somebody to give it all to us. If I've been grafted into something, that means I didn't qualify for it. I got included anyway. I did not quite. There's nothing I could do. Only thing I did was receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I bought all of my stuff. Everything that I'm dealing with. And I gave it to him. I bought my issues. My past and my present. And then I get, I get to the point where I'm so serious about what I'm doing. I say, God, the things that I know of and the things that I don't know. We've tricked ourselves with the things that we don't know because most of the stuff we know about, we just don't think God knows that God can't see it. You see your struggle. God is my hand. God said, no, go back. Get back in line. God is my back. Get, get back in line. Bring it. Bring it. So if I'm working this thing out, I'm just three scriptures we're working with right now. If I'm working out my salvation, my own salvation, once I receive him as Savior, the Bible says I'm a new creature. If I'm in Christ. Automatically. Somebody say automatically. When I bring my heart to him, he renews me. There is a spiritual awakening that takes place. Now they say old things are passed away. They don't mean they're not coming back. There's some stuff you did. Some of us are good for the devil. Some of us made the devil proud. Some of us, some of us, he's still on the side waiting on. He said, "Just one word, I can get her back." That's why I stopped saying, "Amen." My right hand say, but my left hand not. Because I may pray what you did say, but I might slap. I I had to stop saying that. I know we're being real with ourselves, but I don't don't want to encourage the area where I'm weak. My heart say, but my tongue not. So I want to say the right thing, but I just might cuss you out. That ain't me. I'm talking about somebody in here. ain't talking about me. I don't want to, but it, it might happen. Somebody said, what if it do? I got to put in work. I ain't going to just cuss you out for five minutes and don't go back and put in some work. I'm not going to fall in sin and say, think it's okay because it's by grace I'm saved. I'm going to put in work. 
The Bible tells us if we confess our sins. Confess what? Somebody said that means tell them about you. Tell them where your struggle is at. Don't be trying to identify my struggle. Amen. That's why you can't work out your salvation. You stupid and looking at my issue. Man, the Bible's such a the Bible's such a good read for me. Because you're trying to look at the, the, the bit of dust in my eye, you got a whole tree in your eye. That's the Bible too. Oh God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to my notes. I don't, I don't know why I take notes. I'll never use some notes. Let's go back over here. <laughs> go back to uh, Philippians real quick. I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna do this here. Glory to God. Somebody say I have a responsibility, have a responsibility. to put in work. Put in work. My, walk with God my walk with God is my responsibility. It's my responsibility. Even even when I get a good word. I need to take what I'm hearing, take notes, go back and study it, find out where I missed it. Because some point, some point during the service, you get excited. Somebody shout on this side, scare you on that side, and you miss the point. You got to go back and see what God is saying to you. Go back up to the Philippines real quick. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to work this part, and we'll park here and, and do this on Bible study next week. It says, so then, my dear brothers, I'm reading this in the Amplified, Philippians 2 and 12. As you have always obeyed my instructions, and it says, with enthusiasm. Y'all still with me? You know how we get excited in church when we hear something? The prophet give us a word, we enthused about it. Amen. We know that God is speaking to us, it's confirming what I've been hearing, and we're enthused about it, and we're good in the presence of people. We're good when we are accountable to someone else. When there's an accountability person, we can maintain ourselves. But what about when nobody's holding you accountable? We know what we teach here. True accountability is being accountable in the absence of accountability. When no one is holding me to a standard, and I know that the eyes of the Lord are in all places, beholding the even the good. He see me anyway. So when I miss... Can y'all say that with me? So when I miss. So when I miss. Because some of y'all deep folks say, so if I, no, you, you so when. Some of y'all missed this morning. If I would be so, so, so prophetically, I, if, I, if I would be so bold, I'd say some of y'all missing right now because I'm not saying what you want to hear. It's cool. Not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. Then it says, Continue to work out your salvation. Continue to work out. Everybody say work out. out. Your salvation. salvation. Here's it in parentheses, amplified. That means it is to cultivate it, continue to dig up this stuff, continue to work out, get all these other issues out there, which is still there when you came to Christ. It says bring it to full effect. Actively pursue spiritual maturity. Somebody say it's time to grow up. Maturity makes people angry. Because if I'm not mature, that means that I'm immature. Can I break it down a little further? If I'm immature, that means that I'm childish. We got some childish church folks, man. How do we know? Because we get mad about the smallest things. People get on our nerves so easily. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, but when I, came, when I became mature, Paul said, I put away childish things. So the stuff that used to hinder me, you can't get me with that no more. You can talk about me. Talk about me. So I'm going to give you something to talk about. You mad at me because I didn't speak? Yeah. I might just speak the way you wanted me to speak. Yeah. You might just be good for a nod because you can't handle a hello. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody can't handle a hello because they want to have a deep conversation. I might not have time for a conversation. I might be passing by and say, what's up? Amen. You might, think, you might take it personal. Yeah. 
Because you're immature. And because I'm immature, when God starts releasing things, I'm not ready for it. But he still has something for me. Y'all still with me? Can y'all put this in your notes? He's not keeping it from me. He's keeping it for me. Man, I love y'all. Y'all love the Bible. He's keeping it for me. And I can't get my stuff until I grow up. I had to tell my grandbaby to quit driving from the back seat. That needs to be all in my phone when I'm trying to put music on for it. She said, no, 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 go right here, go right here. I said, what I told you about reading my phone from the back seat? I was riding one day, and I grabbed my phone, and I started doing a text. And she said, Papa, you know you said texting and driving is dangerous. I said, stop driving from the back seat. had the audacity to have three of them with me, my wife one day. From the time they got in the car, y'all gonna understand what I'm saying. Trinity started it. They all was hungry. And they used her to promote their agenda. So she's sitting in the middle so I can see her in the rearview mirror. She keeps saying, pop. Y'all know Trinity don't talk sweet. But she was saying, Papa, we so hungry. And the other two were saying, yes, they start egging on. <laughs> you got it. They, was, they, were, they were egging her on. And because they were egging, I said, stop all that talking behind me. But because she had an audience to encourage her she kept on, like the woman in the Bible, keep troubling, keep troubling the man. He said, the Bible said the man had no fear of God, no man, but because the woman kept knocking at the door, he gave her what she wanted. There are times when you don't feel like God hears you. You praying, you praying, you're doing all the right things. You praying, you praying, seeing like God knows. Keep going back. Trinity had an audience, but if you have an audience or not, there are some things you're going to go to God with. Nobody can hear the conversation but you and God. Because you're not going to mature. There's some stuff you are afraid to say in front of people because they see you, they see you more mature than that. There's some stuff you struggle with at your age in Christ that you still struggle with that you are afraid to say in front of people. Take it to God anyway. Cultivate Fully mature your walk. Amen. Take it to him. God, I still got this issue. And I don't want to miss you. What you're doing in this season, God, I don't want to miss. I want to be stuck in the same place in December. See, y'all talking about next year. I'm talking about December. Next week. I, I want to be further than I am next week. When next week come around, everything God got for me. So wherever my immaturity is at. Wherever I have missed a spiritual awakening, if people are still getting on my nerves so easy, what is it in me? What are you after? Somebody say, give it up. I know this ain't deep enough for some of y'all. Amen. Because if you can give it up, it can be your spouse. So everything your spouse do, just get on your nerve. I'd be bothering my wife. She'd say, boy, you're doing too much. Me being the petty person that I am sometimes, I'll do some more. Then I find her quiet. I said, oh, she's praying now. Right response can change situations. When she, when she get quiet, I stop messing with her. Come on. Some of us, we get in arguments with people. We get in arguments with ourselves. Because people ignore us. We want to be petty and people ignore us and we get mad because we can't trouble folks. Some people just outgrow stuff. Look at somebody say, it's time to outgrow some stuff. I know this message don't go together, but it's all, I'm all over the place. If, 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 if I'm still struggling, 
there's some stuff I still need to work out. I got to put in the work. I could even throw the scripture, lay aside every, y'all know the Bible. And what? The, what? And lay aside every way and the sin. The sin. Not a sin. Every translation says the sin. So there's something that'll get you every time. And this is some of the things you need to be taking to God. This particular thing gets me every time. He's going to come back and say, well, my grace is sufficient. Because wherever temptation, God said there is a way of Y'all don't like the Bible. So it just keeps, the Bible just keeps on bringing us. The only thing I want to be cycled through is the word of God. Because if I stay in in the word, it's going to bring me through a process. Come on. Y'all still with me? Let me finish reading. I'm almost finished. It says, bring it to full effect. It says, actively pursue spiritual maturity. Then it says, with all inspired fear and trembling. Y'all still there? It says, using serious caution. Oh, it's on the screen. Uh-uh. Serious caution and critical. Se- Y'all read that for me. Self-evaluation. Not me evaluating you. Self-evaluation. Not measuring your process with my process. Because what that calls us to do, compare. The Bible says don't compare ourselves among ourselves. Say this is not wise. So it says, amen, to caution self-evaluation to avoid anything. Y'all read the rest of that for me. That might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. For it is it, for it is not your strength, but it is God. So I'm still struggling with it. I'm trying to do it in my own strength. You still with me? <laughs> Who is effectively working at, <laughs> working at, at work in you, both to will and to do, and to work that is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and ability to do what? Fulfill. So if I can't do it, that means I'm not dependent on him. I don't argue my way out. This is just Bible. I'm just reading the Bible. I don't think I did any definition. I just read the scripture. Expounded on scripture. Bible study on Sunday. God trying to get us to a place where we are mature. Titles don't make us mature. Positions don't make us mature. Some people don't respect you because you're in the position. Just like the military. Because you got the rank. I got to respect your rank. I might not like you particularly. Come on. Police officer show up. You don't like him. But you got to respect his uniform. And don't mess around and don't know the law. They'll make you do stuff that you don't even supposed to do. That's why you got to mature. Look at somebody say it's time to grow up. If I want to qualify, and it's not no keeping the law, I don't drink no more, I don't cuss no more, I don't do, what do you do? Watch it. The things you count out, counting what you don't do, on the other hand, there's some stuff that you still do. Come on. We just want to magnify what we don't do no more. Huh? What's going on in your heart? What's going on in your mind? I had to repent the other night. I, I like to tell on me. The uh, movie Straight Out of Compton was on. We just was breezing through. And they put that particular part where they got to that song. They said, don't sing this song. I was listening. I was just watching the movie. I'm going to talk to Prophet Evan over here because me and her can get along. <laughs> and then they say, the police try to tell us what we can't sing, what we can't do. He said, Dre, drop the beat. And then as soon as they, as soon as the song started, I started rapping. Oh. Then I stopped. I said, what am I saying? Y'all know when that song came out? Why can I still remember the words? And I started trying to put words that, no, that's wholesome in there. I was trying to fix it up, you know, because I wanted to be spiritual. 
But my heart was steady being convicted. Say, why do I? I've been saved 30 years. Because music does something to us. Y'all got some songs. You know them verbatim. And when you sing them songs, it takes you back to where you were when you heard those words. Before I went to sleep, I started. I went. I prayed a prayer. I was repenting because then they, they, when he left the group, when Ice Cube left the group, and they did that little battle song, he did No Vaseline. I was like, "What? I still know the words." Your mind is like a hard drive. That's why you got to constantly work out your own salvation. Because the stuff I thought I forgot, there's a trigger that comes. And you find yourself doing what you used to do without even hesitating. Because it's still there. And if you don't put something new in, can I give you all a a side note? All the old stuff, it's not going to ever go away. As long as you're in the earth, you're still wrapped in this stuff. It's still there. If you used to be a drunk, you're subject to drink again. If you smoked weed, you better not smell the right weed. You're going to want some more weed. I'm just telling the truth. I'm, about, I'm almost finished. Man, we got out of the car. We was in the, in the parking lot, and I passed by a car. I passed by a car. I said, man, what kind of stuff they smoking? That, that's, that's synthetic stuff. In, in open air in a parking lot. Why oh, the Bible say lay aside every way? Joker drive by you at the light, you can smell this stuff. But you also say that don't bother y'all no more. <laughs> we, we were at a hotel one time at a, at a, at a uh, what do you call it, a guest house when we, when we traveling? And Airbnb, no, my baby, we was in the room, and my wife told me, she just hollered out the blue, I don't want no cigarette. I said, baby, ain't nobody smoking. She said, somebody's smoking somewhere. On, we were in the building. These people were outside, not outside our window, down the hallway, outside in the front. And this woman's, this, the nicotine spirit came. And she hollered out of blue, I don't want no cigarette. Some of us need to be cleansed, washed thoroughly. We got to work this out of us. My final take, my final scripture, man, I'm going to stop because I can keep going. The Bible says, let not a man think he standeth, lest he fall. When you think you got it. All right, don't get me no more. Okay, keep saying that. Whatever your issue was, I never got to the other part of the scripture. Oh, God. The Bible tells us, it says, do all things without murmurings or questioning the providence of God. Let me finish that out. So that you may prove yourself to be blameless and, and guileless innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish in the midst of a morally crooked and spiritually perverted generation. You read that too fast. I'll read it again. <laughs> Glory to God. I got carried away over there. It's, it's, it's in the house. That's why I'm, I'm going this way. I love y'all so much. I changed what I thought I was going to say to give you what you need because I'm speaking the word of God. But there is a word from God that you need. And it's the little things, the little foxes, the little things that we think is not that bad. Y'all in school, they have true or false tests. True or false. When you think about doing wrong as a believer, when you're thinking about it, conviction automatically comes before you do it. If there's no conviction, you might need to go back to the altar. I'll get ready to do it. It ain't, 
It ain't that bad. It's still, it ain't that bad. What is wrong? How you process things? Glory to God. Where were we at? I'm going to finish this. Verse 14, Amplified Bible. And I'm finishing. Do everything without murmuring. Somebody say, stop complaining. Or questioning the providence of God. As a believer, as you're working out your salvation, as you come together with other believers, do all things without murmuring so that you may prove yourselves to be blameless and guileless, innocent and uncontaminated. Y'all still with me? Children of God without blemish in the midst of a moral. Are we in a morally crooked and spiritually perverted generation? The scripture says, among whom you are seen. As children of light, they know who you are. Beacons shining out clearly in the world of darkness. It says holding out and offering to everyone the word of life instead of convicting everyone and putting everyone in hell already because they don't do it like you do it. The word of life. So that in that day of Christ, I will have reason to rejoice greatly because I did not run my race in vain, nor labor without result. As a pastor and leader, why I'm working on me? Why God working on me? Let me know that he's still, I still got stuff I need to get out of me. My assignment is to also let you identify that you still got stuff to get out of you. Because I don't want just parts of what God has for me. I want everything. Not just stuff. Material things. Bible says, wealth and riches shall be in my house. I want everything God has for me. Wealth, health, all of it comes together. I want to be able to qualify for stuff because of what I do in the realm of the spirit. Because of the favor that is on my life. So when I go places in my credit score don't qualify me. The favor of God qualifies me. I ain't got no hidden stuff. You know how you go apply for stuff and you forgot it's on your credit? And <laughs> they used to have this thing back in the day called Finger Hut. I think it was called Finger Hut. Yeah. Y'all get all those gadgets and things from Finger Hut and then you stop paying for it. You stop paying for it in 82. And then you go and get something in 95 and they say, you got this on you. You owe $30. I mean, it's simple stuff. I don't, want, I don't want to disqualify myself. So everything I know to do, I'm going to stop pretending like I don't know. Can y'all do that? Say, say I'm going to stop pretending like I got it. When I know, I still have a struggle. We all still have one or two or three or four or five or six. But if I work them out, if I willfully Give it to God. That's why the scripture says, lay aside every weight. Him, her, it, all that stuff. Lay it aside. But God, I can't. Yes, you can. You can make it without that. You can do better. Sometimes you can do better just letting folks work their own self out. I want my wife to be more in, in God. I want her to pray more. I know you pray. Where got your own salvation? We was right another day. My wife said, baby, we, we was talking about fasting and praying. I said, hey, she said, because she told me, see, I like I'm going to fast sometimes because I like to eat. I said, I fast. I fast when I want to. I fast when I need to. Just certain times of the day. I'm greedy. So that might be something I need to give to God because I got an eating disorder. I believe it's a disorder because I, I've been trying. I'm working it out. I'm working it out. But things I don't have a problem with, I don't magnify. I'm not going to take her weakness and magnify it to make my weakness look smaller. That's why the scriptures say, "Work out your own." If I work on me, according to the Word of God, and you work on you. We'll get worked out 
together. Can y'all look at somebody and say, if I work on me, and you work on you, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Because if I'm working on me, you working on you, when I see you mess up, I ain't got time to tell you magnifying what you did. Because if I see you messing up, I'm probably like, man, I might have some, some same issues. I saw them arguing in the car. So what you were arguing in? Come on. Some of us just don't care, man. So God, help me be and do all that you've ordained so I can get all that you have for me. Amen. Come on, give God a hand, praise. I'm done. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> God began to deal with me even as I was giving some stuff to my children and the family group. I'm going to give this to you all. This is how you're going to get better. If I desire to accomplish all that God has given me to do, are y'all listening to me? Here's what I need to do. Go to God, and God's going to give you things that he needs you to do. Prioritize your priorities. Prioritize your priorities. The most important thing you need God to do, all those things might be your husband, your wife, your children, put those things on a list. But then the most important thing, this on, is this on the right side of your paper. This is your homework. On, 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 on the right side of your paper, the most important things, and list them in order of importance. Amen? Five, ten, however many it is. Then on the left side of your paper, I want you to put time at the top. All right? Y'all still with me? The right side, it's going to be my priorities. The left side, time. The right side, all my priorities in orders of importance. On the left side, time. And all you're going to do on the left side of that paper is identify where you spend most of your time at. If your most of your time is on number five and your number one is not getting your time, that's why you're frustrated. Y'all still with me? Give me an example, Pastor. I'm glad you asked. Your marriage is a priority. Number one. But when you take time on the left side, your job might be number five and you put more of your time in your job than your marriage. Number two might be my relationship with my children. So where's secondly where I'm putting my time in? I might be putting my time in the gym working out most of the time instead of my relationship. Y'all got y'all understand what I'm saying? Because if you are out of if there's no balance, this is a part of just like working out your salvation. This is working out the things that God has given you to do. Somebody say, I don't have five things. You got two or three. If your priorities and your time are not matching, you got to adjust. It's part of working out. Y'all still with me? Y'all got real quiet right there. That's some homework. Amen. We gonna be all right. We standing. I'm done, y'all. For real this time. I'm for real this time. I'm I'm finished for real. How many of y'all been in New Life long enough when I, when I used to get homework to the church? Because <laughs> I want you to grow. I'm doing the same thing. First partaker. I don't want to be in the same place in December. See, y'all talking about next year this time? Uh-uh. I don't want to be in the same place in December. I'm believing God. Somebody else can relate to this. I'm believing God for financial Miracle. <laughs> and so, concerning finances, one of my main priorities, I'm always going to give to the kingdom. I'm going to always tie the soul into the kingdom. I told you, my, I want to pay my home off. Put this, do this for the, the kingdom, my house, things I want to do this, boom, boom, boom. When my money come, 
And then my car is number five. If the car breaks down, it don't become my number one all of a sudden. Y'all still with me? You write these things down so you don't shift when something happens. If my marriage is my priority and I'm spending my time elsewhere, when I start putting my time in my marriage and she makes me mad or we get in a heated discussion, my time with her doesn't change. Y'all still with me? Because some of us let our emotions change when we put our time. He's just praising God. Y'all still with me? It's simple, but if you apply these little small principles, they're going to help you work things out. Work it out. I got to put in the work. I got to put in the work. If I want to get fit, I just can't go to the gym and start working out. I can work out five days a week, but if I don't eat right, I believe my nutrition is 80% of the work. This, this is what my studies have shown me. So when I'm not in the gym, as long as I eat right, I still look like I'm fit. Come on. Even when I mess up at night sometimes. I had those surges. Amen? There are prerequisites. There are, there, are, there are things that qualify us, and we can't work on these ourselves. We got to give this stuff to God. So wherever your struggle is, give it to God. Amen? Amen. Every head is bowed. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God, we praise you. We thank you for yet another opportunity, God, to share your word with this, your people. God, we believe you. You say that your word will go out and will not return unto you void, but will accomplish that for which you've sent it and prosper in the thing that you sent it to. God, we thank you that we have ears to hear, hearts to receive, but most of all, spirits to contain your word. We thank you for the people who have heard the word. Now, God, we ask you to allow this word to be made manifest in their life. Allow the word to come alive. Whatever particular word they've heard for their situation, God, give life to it even now. God, give life to it even now. God, give them a tangible manifestation of what you're about to do in their lives. As we redirect our hearts toward you, God, in relationship rather than in religion, Every issue, God, we bring it to you. Every worry, every care, we cast our care on you for we know that you care for us. And God, we trust you with all our heart. We lean not to our own understanding. In this season that we're in, God, we want to be strengthened in you. Help us to trust you even the more. God, we thank you right now for every opportunity that we've been faced with to put our trust in you. Now, God, we go forth, knowing that if you're for us, you're more than the world against us. We thank you right now for supernatural growth in every area of our lives. We give you praise for it now. We say that it is so now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand praise. Amen.